that's me over there. I'm back here with a sturdy spirit of justice. Sorry about last time when it took me a long time to figure out that shutters thing. This session of rep recording episodes three and four, um, it's been some days since I recorded parts one and two because of all the nonsense that happened in part one and two. Made it a lot longer to edit. And then there was also that other huge long video we had about uh, in Kingdom for Kingdom Hearts. And it was just a lot of uh, stuff all together made it so that I wasn't able to record for several days. So it's been some days and uh, I've lost my short term memory on what all happened. So I just got to re re reconfigure myself with this and get through these next few testimonies and we should be good. We probably, we're probably in like the, the latter quarter of this trial, uh, this particular case, I would guess. First cases in these usually take us about four or five episodes, and this is episode four! So let's do this! Maybe this vibe ain't top on the charts where you're from. What's your poison? Orchestra? Jazz soul? There's nothing wrong with my ears, Witness. I said that in a really weird way. There's nothing wrong with my ears, Witness, but there's something not- But something's not quite right with your eyes. Mr. Andy Standen, you've been lying to this court. <laughs> now why would I lie? I got nothing to hide. Truth and truth alone is all the same. Lying, y'all, not lying, I'm a fang. I contend. <laughs> I contend otherwise. Do you recognize this object, Mr. Andy Sandin? It's a temple notice, man. What of it? In this notice, the following instruction to the temple monks is written. All of the hallway shutters will remain shut for today's dance of devotion. And don't you even try to tell us that it wasn't that way on the day in question, because we know when the blackout happened, it was crazy dark, which wouldn't have happened if the shutters were open. What you talking about, Phoenix? I'm talking about the fact that from your chamber, you couldn't have seen anyone going out in the treasure room from those shutters. <laughs> Looks like you didn't get the memo. No way. I don't believe it, man. If you don't believe it, why don't you read the notice for yourself? Uh... Well, let's see, uh, something something will, something something for, something something... Is that your idea of reading? I'm not so hot at reading Koranese, man. <laughs> I usually get one of the other monks to read stuff for me, you know. Doesn't that make your duties as head monk a little difficult? Hey, got me some slack, man. I only moved to this country six months ago. It's quite recent, isn't it? So... How did someone who's only been here six months become a head monk of a temple? How little you understand! Religious faith can be measured in months or years. I've only been an adherent to Koranism for three months myself! <laughs> the Holy Mother's teachings really spoke to me, prompting me to stay in this country. Oh, I love that part of his objection game where he does that like... Like that. So It's so like dramatic and awesome. Or was it the fact that there are no lawyers here that spoke to you? Hmm. Mr. Payne, I know just how you feel, my man. Oh, and this is teaching spoke to me, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Brother Dumb and Brother Dumber. Well, I know why Payne suddenly became a believer in Koreanism, but... Could Andy Standen have had an ulterior motive for becoming a believer, too? Mr. Andy Standen, is there some kind of, like, <laughs> hippie musician named Andy that I should know about? But I don't because my pop culture knowledge is dead in the water, and so that's why he's a stand-in for Andy? Were you really in your chamber as you claim? What? Hey, be, be chill, brother. <laughs> Weren't you instead somewhere else? Objection! Mr. Right, what kind, what kind of nonsense are you spouting now? According to Mr. Andy Stanton's testimony, he saw Obi with his own eyes. Therefore, is it really nonsense to suggest he could have seen Obi from somewhere else? <laughs> well... <laughs> Do you have a theory defense? Do you know where Mr. Andy Stanton was, if not in his chamber? If he wasn't in his room, then... If Albie had gone down the hallway towards the treasure room, there are only a few places he could have seen Albie from. And if we know the power suddenly went out um, when your man had access to the breaker here, it makes enough sense that he would have been somewhere around the storeroom or breaker. <laughs> I do have a theory, your majesty. Let's say the witness really did see Albie going towards the treasure room. What then? The defense proposes that this is the only place he could have been to see Elby go down that hall. I'm sure we're talking about right beside the breaker, right? Take that! Th there? But you just suggested earlier that that's where the true culprit might have been. True, but no matter how I look at it, this is the only place any Sandy could have been. Mr. Ford, no, uh, don't tell me. Are you accusing Mr. Andy Stanton of being the true culprit in this case? Jacques! <laughs> yes, your majesty. I contend there's a strong possibility this witness is the murderer. I mean, I have extra insight because I watched the opening cutscene, but... 
pretend I don't have that for a minute and I got there on pure talent and skill. Yes. Objection! How dare you be so disrespectful! First you criticize her when Evelyn's his insides, then now you accuse the head monk of murder? Objection! This is the only place the witness could have been. If he was here, he could have struck the victim down from behind and moved his body to the treasure room and caused the blackout. That's nothing but groundless conjecture! And there's one more thing. Do you remember what was said in the opening argument? The opening argument? Which one's that again? <laughs> During that argument, it was suggested that Albi used his position as monk in training to get his hands on the treasure. That's right, and we'll have it. Well, why don't we try this twist on for size? This twist on for size. The thief used his position as head monk of the temple to get a hold of the treasure. What? What? <laughs> you joshing me, man? The key to the treasure box has been passed down from head monk to head monk. What better position to be in if you want to steal the treasure? You can't be possibly be serious! Does this mean you're claiming that Mr. Andy Stanton's oath of faith is nothing but a lie designed to get him close to the treasure? The witness hasn't been truthful in his testimony to this court. So clearly he isn't above lying. <laughs> Didn't you swear to the Holy Mother that not but the truth would you bring? In light of that, I don't think it's unfair to call your faith into question. Objection! Objection! This is ridiculous, and there are no limits to what this lawyer will say. I mean, lie is, is such a strong word. Maybe it was just a, a mistake. Yeah. Hold it. The gallery's been unusually quiet. Enough with the nervous wreck regime, prosecutor. You're just embarrassing yourself, man. What? What was that, Mr. Understanding? Lord, man, you really are the lowest of the low. You've gone and said something I can't forgive. I'll have to kill you, too. <laughs> you called my belief into question, my faith in the Holy Mother. I did not mean to hit auto- shit! Oops, sorry. And nobody, nobody gets away with that! Oh, man. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> what on earth? That music! He's making my ears bleed! Never mind that, what about the poor gallery? They're right beside it. And also, where the hell did you get these? I propose the killer use these as the murder weapon. This is the music of my soul! Wow! Death to the lawyer! <laughs> I'm the Twilight Messenger! Can't ya uh, tell? Go on, uh, take the Slayer Lawyer to straight to hell! He strip him with lies, but every Philistine's gonna send that lawyer to the guillotines! I guess it's Philistines! Now, for something completely different. That's what I thought they were gonna say earlier when he said, now for some. Anyway. That punkity plunk music just won't let me express my rage! Your rage, huh? Isn't the real source of your anger having your lie exposed? You just don't get it! If I lied, it's cause you drove me to it! Arrgh! I'll sniff around suspicious and throw in full false accusations! Sorry, but as a lawyer, I'm afraid that's my job. Also, your voice is making my throat hurt. Can you calm down? Yeah, well, lawyers are crap! Keep making noise, or I'll have to use my partner here on you! I'm the one making noise. Hey, so you want to know the truth, huh? Think you can handle the truth, do ya? Fine, let us see you try. Feel the heat of my brutal death breath. No, thank you. Savage, right? Sweating bullets, ain't ya? It's a pretty sick riff, I gotta say. I love the little karate stance he does after as well. The screams of my soul are gonna make a mosh pit out of this peanut gallery. No, don't cheer for that! Did he really just win the court over with that performance? Yo, Gazer, I got someone to testify! Arrgh. Get ready for the howling of my soul! I call this chart topper Soul Screaming Truth! Oh my. Hey, well, at least my voice is warmed up now. <laughs> Witness testimony Soul Screaming Truth. Arrgh. 
the priest's assistance had come to an end. To the music storeroom, my way, I did went. The truth is what you dread. Hear me shred. From my spot in front of the storeroom, I saw OB creep to the treasure room. A trailing from behind, hand on the sand, I saw patrol after OB he went. Me and my girl, innocent and sweet, back by the storeroom can't be beat. The kiss is the longest testimony in the game. Then out wins the power. Took her to midnight. Blacker than the blackest back rock and robin all sight. Yeah, baby! Let that soul metal flow! <laughs> Objection? <laughs> what is that music? I've never heard anything like it. And it's so fast, it's making my head spin. <laughs> this is Damalon Metal! <laughs> Ow. Hey, yo, geezer, how those ears ringing? I don't know much about music, me neither, Phoenix, but I've got chills and they're multiplying. <laughs> Is it electrifying? <laughs> you scared lawyer man? Run away. Run away fast as you can. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but thank God I'm doing Payne's voice right now. What a wonderful rhythm. The perfect accompaniment for further deliberations. Now, Master Andy Stanton, what did you go to the music storeroom for? Is that what you got from that? I didn't hear a word of his testimony. <laughs> hey, I want to put my Dalma on away. She's my precious partner. Gotta give her a good rest after playing in the right. But then why did you lie before? <sighs> because you'd send me to hell! Huh? We all know about lawyers and their lying lawyerly ways. Am I right, people? If I admitted I went to the storeroom, he'd have dropped up a false charge on me! I didn't want to get sent to hell! What do you say? He's right, that so would have happened. <coughs> now I see why that defense capability act was passed. You feel me, Korain? Yeah, you said it! Is it too much to ask for a low key trial? <laughs> yes. Now are you punks ready to rock our watch? Yeah! <laughs> I can't hear ya! I said you're ready to teach this lion lawyer how we do things around here! All right, then I'm gonna lay it on you one more time. The screaming truth of my soul! Which I will now read in a very calm voice. <laughs> Cross-examination. Soul screaming truth. Just give me a minute. <laughs> Ooh, up-tempo te uh, testimony thing though, that's a good sign. And also because he revealed his like, final form. Clearly I need more water, give me a second. <laughs> I'm fully expecting Maya to come in and bust us out by the end of this. I'm going to be elated when that happens. At least my voice is a bit raspy now, so I actually sound a bit closer to Alby. <laughs> It'll be, I have to stretch less to do that voice. Okay, the priestess's dance had come to an end, uh, so I went to the music storeroom. This doesn't mean anything. You're afraid of death, hear me shred. <laughs> I wanna push on it though. In front of the storeroom, I saw Alby creep to the treasure room. Patrol came soon after. Well, if he went there, then how did, how is it that we saw them? We were uh, under the impression that, well, according to Alby, they were on the stairs. This seems weird. Uh, me and my girl in this one sweet back by the storeroom can't be beat. So they were just, you were seeing, I'm still just hanging around by the storeroom that whole time. Then the power went out, ticket to midnight, blacker than blackest black, robbing all sight. So you standing right beside the breaker, the power suddenly went out and I'm not supposed to find this suspicious. What are you thinking, Phoenix? Actually, before we find out what Phoenix is thinking, let me just push on uh, this one, because <laughs> I have to know what it happens. Hold it! Um, so what exactly do you mean by death truth? Ugh, it's the blade of truth that's gonna send your lawyer soul to hell! A sea of blood will be the last thing you ever see! I'm not sure I want to get what he's saying. <laughs> I don't expect a bubblehead like you to understand. Either you get it and you feel it, or you don't! Simple as that! Hey, when you're right, you're right, man. Phoenix, what do you make of this? I do love the style of this. You know what, actually, I have to imagine that for Apollo and Athena, we won't be here. Maybe it's like Phoenix is gonna be here in Kurayan land for the whole time, but uh, Apollo and Athena will be back at home and their courtroom will be a bit more normal. <laughs> I mean, normal for Ace Attorney. <laughs> and I guess the health bar will be different there as well. I only understood about half of what this guy's saying. I suppose I should press his statements, but I'm really not looking forward to it. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, the one that comes to me, because this is the one that we're pretty sure is wrong, or we're pretty sure is, is important anyway, is that all, uh, Patrol followed him Sorry, I hope, I hope there aren't any voice actors watching, because they're going to be like, No, don't do that to your voice! <laughs> but I don't care! Because according to Albi, this all happened on the stairs where he met Patrol, and we are pretty sure Albi's telling the truth. Anyway, it just seems worth pushing on this one. 
Because there's where patrol was at what time is very much in question and important. Hold it! Someone tells me this is going to be a spectacular waste of time, but what do you mean by hound on the scent? What? You don't get it? It's always the same, y'all. Lyrics question without mercy. The more famous the song, the greater the controversy. It wasn't your lyrical sense I was questioning. I say hound on the scent like a hunting dog, because, you know, roll was a guard and... Uh-oh. Here we go. The inspiration came to me suddenly like a flash and... Hold it! Um, that's okay. Um, you don't have to explain your lyrics anymore. Hey! You're the one who asked! I know I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Mr. Understanding, you're still on the stand, so please stick to your testimony. You can explain your lyrics to me later in dumb on class. Fine! Have it your way, geezer! Ah, the show must go on! Slash and thrash! Okay. Power went out? Hold it! Where were you when the power outage occurred? Like I said, I was in the music storeroom. My girl had been sounding a little off, so I had to get her back in tune. <laughs> Isn't it true that you were actually in the hallway at that time? The hallway, you say? Why would I be in the hallway? You were waiting for Mr. Wool to come back from his patrol of the treasure room. Now that he discovered the treasure had been stolen, you were going to kill him! Lawyer man, just as always, so full of bull. Spewing noxious lies and pulling the wool. Filthy liar, through and through. And I ain't never ever gonna forgive you. Other lies with no evidence. <laughs> evidence, as always, his claims are just tenuous. Hey, nice prosecutor. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Someone stop their jam session, please. Not a much there. Very well. Uh, okay, well, I, I may as well push here, but no, I, you know what? I should save my voice. <laughs> uh, oh, from my spot in front of the storm, I saw that I'll be to creep the treasure room. Hold it! How did I'll be appear at the time? Come to think of it, he was glancing around all shitty like. Ah, you could tell he was up to no good. Shitty, I tell ya. What's that saying about the people who live in glass houses? Well, he was well, he was about to steal the treasure, so it only stands to reason he'd look furtive. Objection! Objection! The defendant admitted he was sneaking in to see the treasure box. Wouldn't that be why he was looking around? What's that, people? Only the Holy Mother knows the truth, you say? <laughs> Wrong! Pish Lubin knows the score, baby! From my lips to our Holy Mother's ear, and it just only sings what he saw there! In other words, my reasoning isn't good enough for a good god boy here. <laughs> and what did you see next, Mr. Andy Stanton? Man, I'm pushing on all the wrong stuff, apparently. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, me and my girl innocent sweet back in the storeroom can't be beat. What exactly were you doing in the music storeroom? Wait, didn't he already tell us he was going to fix up his thing? Why not let me skip through this if so? There! Get the picture! Picture? What picture? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Understanding is requesting that you not ask him the same thing over and over. Hey, Gazer! You got it in one! Take a bow, baby! How the heck did he understand that? <laughs> what was I doing in the music storeroom, you ask? I already told you! I was taking care of my partner in crime, getting ready to put her away! Hasn't stopped you from repeating stuff before. <laughs> but see, would you believe it? Wait, which one haven't I pushed on? This one. The dance came to the end, so you went to the music storeroom. Hold it! You say you went to the music storeroom. But how do we know you didn't go to this treasure room to steal the treasure instead? And on what grounds would you base that accusation? Got anything to show for it? He's right. I don't really have any proof. And yet... Well, you can't prove that you didn't go to the treasure room either! You stole the treasure and were ready to make your getaway when you saw Mr. Roll. So you panicked and ran to the music room, isn't that right? I'm really not controlling the room here. Why do I feel like I'm being stabbed by icy stairs from every direction? The silence is your answer, lawyer man. This audience knows the score. Just what we needed. A moment of silence to bid this lawyer's baseless claim goodbye. Can I get back to cross-examining, please? Why do they always have to hate lawyers so much in this country? I said it before and I'll say it again, lawyer man. After the priestess's dance, I went to the music storeroom. I guess it was one of those we had to push and everything then, because I didn't notice anything unusual with that. Hmm. You've made your assertions clear, defense, but your argument is rather unsubstantiated. That's not good. 
What's so funny, peace, love, and understanding? Sorry, I also haven't really been able to record in like five days. That's why my voice is a bit raw and not used to this. <laughs> Nevertheless, the possibility is still there. You can't deny the witness could have killed the victim under cover of darkness. Objection! Objection! You're forgetting one very important thing. Huh? <laughs> it seems you've forgotten that the outage happened by chance, not design. Oh, well, that's right. Oh, that's right. I did forget about that. Right, but he was right next to the breaker, so we don't know that for sure. I love his little crown that doesn't fit his head. It's not like the witness planned the outage so he could take advantage of the darkness. <laughs> and without darkness, it would have been hard to sneak up behind Mr. Roll and kill him. All right. Even I would notice something coming up behind me. Well, Defense, what do you have to say about that? What can I say about that? Mr. Wright, your claim is completely without merit. Unless you want to argue that the witness somehow magically made the outage happen. <laughs> well, maybe not magically, but... Wait, that's it! <clears throat> I contend the witness could have made the power outage happen. With no magic necessary. What? You have a theory defense. All you have to do is make use of something shown on this diagram. What did the witness use to make the power outage happen? The performance hall. Take that! The witness was in the storeroom. The circuited box is on the storeroom end of the hallway. There's nothing really magical about turning off the breaker, wouldn't you say? <laughs> nice try, but that theory doesn't hold water, lawyer man. And why not? <laughs> They're saying I turned the breaker off and then snuck up on Mr. Roll and hit him. In pitch black darkness with no source of light whatsoever. Is that what you're saying? Um, he glows in the dark- <laughs> With the lights off, that always blacker than a hundred midnights. Can't see the hand for your face! How could anybody commit murder like that? Unless it was somebody standing right in front of the victim, like the accused! I hate when he's right, but I can't just let his point stand. Well, maybe the victim was holding something that served as a guide. A guide through the darkness? Yeah, like a torch or, you know, like any number of things. Something? That's more than a little vague, wouldn't you agree? You ain't gonna move this room with a half-baked hunch like that, bro. You gotta hit him hard. Really make him feel it, you hear me? Just like my verse, baby! Woo! Hmm. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand the witness's lyrics very well either, but in a trial, your arguments have to be clear and precise. Let's see some of that clarity and precision now, Defense. Oh, what do I do? Can you present to us something that could have served as a guide through the darkness? I can! Uh. Yes, I can. Because there has to be something. Alright, let's see what you have, Defense. Come on now, this is an easy one. What could the victim have been holding that had served as a guide through the darkness? That'll be this one over here. Take that! I believe the victim was holding the treasure box. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Have you gone mad? Well, did the box close in the dark, so you could use it as a sort of beacon? Hmm. Well, I guess you're right. But why in the world would the victim be holding the treasure box? If he was the real thief. Oh, well, because your guess is as good as mine. What is this lawyer talking about? Nonsense and lies yet again. Just give him the death penalty already. Is there no way to win them over? Defense? Are we going to be needing those tongue shares after all? No, your majesty. Um. Yeah, man. Do it, do it. Let me get Jim out of this lawyer's streaks of pain. <laughs> Better get those screams of agony out now, lawyer man, while you still have a tongue to scream with. Do you scream with your tongue? I, uh, guess I'd better come up with a reason. No pressure or anything. As to why the victim was holding the treasure box, it can easily be explained as thus. Brain, don't fail me now. What reason could the victim possibly have had to be holding that treasure box? The victim was holding... Sorry, the victim? When did we say the victim? Sorry, I I totally blanked on that they were saying the victim was holding it. I don't understand why your man couldn't have been holding it. Uh, the victim was holding the treasure box because he was a, de a security guard, devout believer. Neither of those make sense. A devout believer would not have stolen it. A security guard had no reason to steal it. So the real patrol was the real thief, I guess. Is where we're going with this. But your man, um, Peace Lubbin, was, was trying to steal it as well. So he was like, this is the perfect opportunity to kill him, get the thing, and then frame the murder on someone else so that he would also be framed for the, the theft. The thief, I guess. I don't understand why we're not saying that 
uh, peace loving was the one holding the light because that would that would be what makes sense to me but it's an idea i just happened to stumble upon but i think it just might be the answer and it would turn this whole trial upside down hello defense are you still with us that is actually an interesting way for this to turn out and does turn quite a bit of that on its head because then it it changes the context of what Albi was going there of Albi's movements anyway let's hear this easy explanation you promised i don't think i promised it would be easy isn't it possible that it was because the victim himself was the thief the victim the thief gobble gobble squawk squawk chatter chatter <laughs> what kind of bullshit are you spewing now your magistrate, this guy's off his rocker. Uh, if the victim was the thief, everything we've learned so far would make sense. And it would give us a complete, a completely new way to interpret the victim's actions. So completely new that I couldn't even say it. After the morning dance of devotion, Mr. Roll went to the treasure room. He grabbed the box that contained the treasure and started to take off with it. It does make it a lot easier to explain with uh, Andy's, Andy's, Andy Stannon's testimony how he could still be the killer without having just lied too much just now. But then he ran into Albie on the great stairs. That's why Mr. Roll pulled out his gun on Albi. Then, when the blackout occurred... Mr. Roll was bludgeoned to death in the darkness. This explains why the victim would be holding the glowing treasure box in the dark. And how it would have been possible for someone other than the accused to kill him! It's crazy, but he's got a point! That would totally turn it around, wouldn't it? Do you have any idea what you're saying? <laughs> you're an unbelievable lawyer, man. I think you've lost it. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Roll trying to roll the temple. The devout believer. That pious Koreanist. I won't allow you to disparage the victim's disparted soul with unfounded allegations. I hope you're prepared to back up your claim. Of course, Your Majesty. Oh, really? In that case, can we assume you have a proof? <laughs> Uh-oh. Proof, huh? Um, do I have any proof? But I can't back down it now. Yes, I have proof. In my dreams, the proof that Mr. Roll was the thief may have been left behind on a certain piece of evidence. Fingerprints, I guess we're saying? Like, well, let's check this thing for fingerprints. Well, he had gloves on, didn't he? Very well. Hang on. Yep. Pretty glovey. Oh, and that's that was what we're saying is the blood got in his hand because someone else took off his... Put, put, I was trying to put the glove on the, his hand, but had already gotten all bloody from murdering him. I don't know. Very well. Let's see your evidence and be ready to stand behind it. Footprints, fingerprints, I'll take anything at this point. I need proof, something that would have been involved with the theft. And that might still have some trace evidence left on it. What proof do you have that the victim might have been the thief? All I got is either the treasure box or the key? Oh, well, Andy Sandin did say, you know, this is the only key, but the kid just got it anyway, right? So it's probably the treasure box I'm meant to do here? It's either the treasure box or the key, I'm pretty sure. I guess, the, I, I'm, I'm assuming because he said specifically fingerprints, footprints, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to not notice right yet, yet that he's wearing gloves. And they'll, that'll be the sort of thing where I, I, pull, I point out the evidence and then they go, but he's wearing gloves, Phoenix. Um, we don't have any, I think the box is more concrete because we have no evidence that Patrol was ever in like a physical altercation with Andy Stanton, and he was apparently, it keeps its on his person at all times. So, treasure box, take that! The defense would like to examine the treasure box. There might be trace evidence on it that would show that the victim had held it. Might? You better hope you turn up something more definitive than that defense. Yes, sir, your majesty. Oh, very well, um, bailiff, bring the treasure box. Oh, it's a lot smaller than I thought. <laughs> there you are, defense. Feel free to examine it. If I don't find something now, my entire argument up to this point will be blown. Plus, there's that little matter of the old tongue shears. I have to find something. I just have to. What, do I get to actually turn it all around? Oh, finally, I can actually compare it with the damn newspaper. Works any evidence with blah, but also use blah, 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 blah to get a better blah. To turn around, I can always use blah, to just edit, blah, blah, blah. Right, before I look at any fingerprints or any such thing, um, how do I rotate it? Is it right click? Um, oh yeah, that's just in the middle click. Okay, so we have, we go, flower, so from the, from the, the lock moving to the right. Flower, 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 butterfly mural, flower, flower, flower. This is not the same as the one depicted in the friggin' newspaper. So something's weird about that. Uh, let's check the inside. Is that a scratch in the bottom there? 
So this is where the Founder's Orb was, huh? I doubt there's any trace of the orb left here now. Although I don't really know anything about the orb, so who knows? The lock? This is the lock. It was forced open. I don't really see anything else of note about it. Right, okay, we're just saying it was forced open. Fair enough. There's a butterfly relief here. I've seen the same butterfly shape here and there all over Karayin. Interesting, but I guess it doesn't really help me prove anything. The lid? The lid! The lid, 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 lid. Hmm. The lid of the box was forced open, but while the victim was holding the box, the lid must have been closed. I'll try closing the lid too. You'll see like an obvious handprint now, I guess. Oh yeah, okay, so this... Hey! What? You son of a... You locked it! So? What's the big deal? I thought you can open it with that key you're wearing. Yeah, <laughs> no sweat. Then why is there a bucket load dripping off you over there? I think I'd like to open this box back up again. Could you lend me your ma Makatama key? It's worth noting also that the blood clearly is, is pasted across it as though it was... The blood got on it while it was closed, is worth noting, I guess. <laughs> sure. Okay, let's see. Where's the keyhole? Well, it's the Magatama key, so wouldn't it go in the hole above the Magatama mark? Well, it should. Huh? Won't open. <laughs> Why'd you look at that? The thief must have busted the lock when they forced the box open. Really? Because I'm not so sure about that. Okay. Not even the Magatama key can open. It glows in the dark. In any case, I'd better take another good look. I have to find proof that the victim was holding this box. Well, there's certainly a bloody handprint here. This blood stain. It shows the outline of a hand. Could this be what I've been looking for? You know what? It's funny. I just noticed the whole turning over of evidence thing. It, what it reminds me of is the turning over of, of items you find in Resident Evil. And, the, and they're both Capcom, right? Right? Resident Evil's Capcom, right? I can't believe I only just made that connection. Yeah, Capcom. Funny that. Could this be what I've been looking for? <laughs> Your Majesty, take a look at this. There's a blood stain here that outlines the shape of a hand. Really? Uh, let me see that. Mm. Oh my, you're right! Now I'm getting somewhere. It was looking dicey for there for a minute. I was I was thinking before we got... Uh, we, we, in that last testimony where it was one you had to push on all of them, I was getting nervous that I wasn't seeing anything. I believe the bloodstain is an outline of the victim's hand as he was holding the box. What?! Even as he was being struck, he held on tight to the precious treasure box. After all, he'd gone through a lot of trouble to steal it. The blood from his head wound splattered across his hand and onto the box. Objection! Your Majesty, don't let yourself be taken in! It's just more of his loyalty deceit. That would explain, however, um, why he got on the back of his hand. If he was sort of bottled under- if he had it sort of, like, or I guess- I don't know how he was holding it, but anyway. What do you mean? <laughs> Mr. Wright, where is your proof that the outline is that of the victim's hand? What? I should have seen this coming. Well, it sure as hell isn't the child. The child's got tiny hands. So if anything, it was peace lubbins. <laughs> <laughs> Either show proof or prepare to meet the shears. Or you could save us all some time and bite your tongue out now and submit it instead. That I did not see coming. Well, defense, how about it? Do you have proof that the outline is of the victim's hand? Where would the proof of something like that even be? Please submit your evidence at this time. What evidence shows that the outline of the treasure box is that of the victim's hand? I guess what they're getting at is that there's blood on the back of his hand. It doesn't prove it, I wouldn't say. But it's probably the closest thing we've got. It is curious, though, that... Oh, I can't. I don't get to rotate it around anymore. In this photograph here, there's just, like, a blood stain in the corner here. And it sort of look It's sort of amorphous, whereas here there's, like, a clear bloody handprint shape. It's almost like it was used to kill someone twice. <laughs> anyway, photograph, I guess. Take that! I've got it. This is the evidence that's going to save my beloved tongue. Mr. Payne, despite your claims about my forked tongue, it just so happens that I have the proof you require. Hey, you do! It's right here in this crime photo. It is? Where? Our uh, defense, please point it out. What proves that the bloodstained outline on the box is that of the victim's hand, you ask? Well, it would be the blood on the back of his hand. No, don't move it like that, suddenly, game. Take that! Mr. Payne, take a good look at the victim's hand. See this? That's blood. What? If we place Mr. Roll's hand inside the bloody outline... you think the blood on his head would complete his bladder. Exactly. Here goes nothing. <coughs> and if they do form one complete splatter, it would prove my theory correct. Then... Then... The victim was really holding the box! I'm willing to bet my life on it. 
The defense reasserts that the victim was the thief who stole the treasure box. This is your first time here the pursuit theme. Obligatory pursuit jamming out of the way. Oh, that's cool. It's like the, it's like a, a bit of a twist on the bam, 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 from the previous game. The way they bring in that brass section. That brass. The defense reasserts that the victim was the thief who stole the treasure box. You can't be serious. I'm, I'm super serious when it comes to not getting beheaded. <laughs> I, 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 I protest. There's, there's no way they would ever match up. I assert that it's patently impossible for- Wow! Talk about tongue karma. Sounds like it just bit his. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Payne? Did your forced tongue get tangled up in there? Or were you trying to submit your own tongue to the court? Why? <laughs> We've all been there. Look at Phoenix, he's so happy with himself. <laughs> I can hardly believe it. Apparently not everything out of the defense's mouth is a bluff. <laughs> of course not, your majesty. This tongue doesn't lie. And I'd like to continue to use my tongue in the future too, if you wouldn't mind. He never has to know it really was a bluff. No, no, Mr. Roll. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Albie. I know it's upsetting news, which is why I was standing there smugly for like a half minute before consoling you. He must have needed the money badly, probably to support his family. After all, he even gave up his dream of becoming a monk to help them. Oh. So that thing Mr. Rule would say to me. Bobby, you train hard and make sure you can become a monk one day. Don't end up like me, he'd say. Yeah. He was probably warning you not to end up a thief. <laughs> Mr. Rule. Objection! No, no, wait just one minute. If the victim was the, was the thief and he was holding the treasure box, then that means Mr. Rule was holding the murder weapon when he was killed. Oh! That's a very good point. It doesn't make much sense, Objection! does it? Objection! If the victim was holding the treasure box, it couldn't have been the murder weapon. Which means the real murder weapon must have been something else. The real murder weapon? It was something else. The blood was thought to have gone on onto the box when the box was used as a weapon. But it turns out that that wasn't the case. The blood spotted onto the treasure box the victim was holding when it was struck with the real weapon. That's what really happened. Isn't that right, Mr. Andy Sandin? <laughs> Are you insinuating I'm the one to use this real weapon? Are you saying I'm wrong in my Andy stand in? Sorry, joke going over my head. Just have to carry on. <laughs> you caught me riled up, lawyer man. I feel a song coming on. Will this song hopefully be in the form of a testimony? Looking for a weapon that just doesn't exist. Pathetic lawyer band. Drop into the abyss. Behind the head, now that's talent. Just pick up a lawyer man, you, you make me sick. You can disappear just like a magic trick. My daughter would have something to say about that. Where's this lawyer man? Don't even buy a weapon. For you, miserable wretch, hell doth me uh, beckon. <laughs> yeah! I know I don't need to remind you, Defense, that your life is on the line. Oh, I know, Your Majesty. Yet you're prepared to risk it on this mere idea of a real murder weapon. Death to the lawyer! This is it. The moment of truth. I can't back down. Not now! Yes, Your Majesty, I am. I'm confident the real murder weapon does indeed exist. <laughs> Um, that's a bold claim, Mr. Wright. Now let's see you back it up. Show us which piece of evidence points to this real murder weapon. Gladly! I knew which one it was. I thought we were gonna get testimony, oh no! What would somebody like Andy Sandin use to bludgeon someone? His guitar, his, his weapon maybe? The weapon he's holding right now? And then he just cleaned it off? I don't know. Uh, so the, the, you know, the guitar instrument thing. <laughs> Don Milan. Now then, defense, uh, please submit your evidence to the court. <laughs> yeah! Let's see it, lawyer man! 
Let's see this thing that shows the real murder weapon you say I used. Oh, key, I guess. That would explain why he was so anxious I uh, th about me seeing it. Oh, but no, it wasn't a stab wound. It was blunt. So I guess they want us to do the photograph and say that the guitar... If this is from the morning, Demis, this is before there was any blood on it anyway. Oh, yeah, duh. It's a different instrument than the one he's holding now. <laughs> Sorry. Take that! What I'm about to present is really nothing more than a possibility. But this thin thread is all I've got. Sorry, that one was probably should have been much more obvious to me. I remember I even looked at this photograph at first and I was like, There's nothing here except it tells us that all three of them were there. Allow me to direct the court's attention to this photo of the morning dance of devotion. That photo? How is that going to help you, Mr. Wright? There's something about it that doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> oh yeah? And what's this something, hmm? You don't have to ask that. <laughs> You're making yourself look really suspicious by challenging me there. This thing here is odd, to say the least. Edu, adu, edu, take that! <laughs> Mr. Andy Standen, why is the instrument you're holding different from the one you're playing in the photo? Would you look at that? They're completely different shapes. I believe you said your Dom Malon was your one and only. Well, Mr. Andy Standen, what do you have to say to that? <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. Then allow me to answer for you. They're different because the one in the photo is no longer in playable condition. Not after you use it to bludgeon Mr. Roll to death! <laughs> My own partner wasn't doing so hot, so I brought his sister along, that's all! Not a big deal, lawyer man! In that case, please submit your old Dom to this court as evidence! Too bad! You're too late! I got rid of her yesterday! You what? Burn her up with the rest of the trash! Ashes to ashes, baby! <laughs> no! He's already destroyed the evidence? And I see more trash right here in this court that needs to burn in the fires of hell! Lawyer trash! <laughs> now there's no proof to show. Oh, come on! That was pathetic! Your agony can sound better than that. Where's that great scream of yours? This... This can't be how it ends. Maya, please do something. I think I've heard enough. It seems the defense is unable to produce the evidence it needs to prove its assertion. But, but your majesty, that's only because the witness destroyed it. Evidence is everything in court. Don't tell me you've forgotten this most fundamental principle of our profession. Without sufficient proof. Your claim that Mr. Understanding is the murderer is no more than conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> There's the pain expression I've been looking for. Alright, granted that time it actually is a pain expression and not just him thinking. By the way, there seems to be one more thing you're forgetting. What is it now? You accuse Mr. Understanding of being the thief, but the real thief turned out to be the victim. Uh oh. And with that, Mr. Understanding's purported motive for murder goes out the window. Right, but the only reason that's so is because we're operating under the, the the theory that Patrol is the one who was holding it to glow in the dark and not Andy Stannon, which is what my original theory was. I mean, it makes a lot more sense that Andy Stannon stole it, went over to buy the breaker, Patrol made his rounds to the thing, saw it was missing, went up the stairs, ran into Albie and went, Did you steal it? That explains why he would say that, if he wasn't holding the box and neither was uh, Albie. Right? Ah! <laughs> Great point, prosecutor! You tell him! I spat all over my microphone, I'm so sorry! If I've been there, I'm gonna just collar roll and call the treasure back! I'm so glad this is one of the first case that we're showing up with this guy, because if I had to do it, <laughs> his voice for a case that was longer than the first case, oh my. There wasn't any reason for me to kill him now, was there? I... There's no good counter-argument to that. It sounds to me like Mr. Andy Stannon has been completely wrongfully accused. Unfortunate as it may be, I think it's time to hand down the verdict in this case. Not good. Not good! Defense, I trust you understand what you yourself will receive for taking on this case? Death. 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 Yes. It was made painfully clear to me many times in this case. Painfully? <laughs> but um, shh. <laughs> what do I do? The, the murder weapon's been destroyed and now I've got no motive. Poor Obi will be convicted and I'll lose my life too. 
<laughs> Mr. Right, you've wasted this court's time and just bears everything we hold sacred. We should charge you with le this thing in addition to the crime of abetting the accused. Yeah, you should pay for desecrating my good name. Bye bye later, man. Time for you to do some repentance in the Twilight Realm. This guy is guilty of sin. I just know it. He must have had some reason to kill Mr. Roll. But what? He had to have told his soul in the treasure, but now Roll was blocking his way out. Come on, people! Let me hear you scream and shout! Time to take this lawyer trash out! Stir a man eight, and I am late. Stir a man eight, and I am late. They're doing like a boom, boom, like a we will rock you. The thing to do at a time like this is to turn my thinking around. I shouldn't be trying to figure out what Andy Sandin's motive was. I should be thinking about what kind of situation would give him a motive. Did you steal it? He said. We know that Mr. Rule was the thief and that he had gotten his hands on the box. So then why... Why in the world did he ask Albie that the question? What about the treasure box would have prompted him to... Ah! Defense, what's gotten into you? Now I get it! Now it all makes sense! <laughs> like Bull Conga, man! What you trying to say? Water is squealing to yourself! Sounds like you knocked some loose upstairs! <laughs> your Majesty! Please hold off on your ruling for just a little while longer! Don't tell me you're going to start begging for your life now! Uh, no, Your Majesty. That's not it. It's just that I realized something important. We've been operating under a serious misconception this whole time. A misconception, you say? That's right. A mistaken notion about the treasure box. But could this really be true? If so, there's still a lot to figure out. I thought it was weird that we jumped right to Patrol being the thief. Yeah, very well. I'm not sure what you have to say. Thank you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty! This is just more of his nonsense. He's just stalling for time. Yeah, but if I'm really lying, then it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> What's 20 minutes more or less when you're dodging the death of a child? And on that lovely note, that's all we have for this episode. Probably I'm leaving it a bit close to the end and we're going to be uh, finishing this case early on in the next episode. We might even be starting case two in that case. Yeah, <laughs> I said case a lot. But that is all the time we have for now. But my, my, is it ever heating up, dear compadres? I know I said that quite a bit, but the gate, you know, the cases, they heat up progressively. They just never stop heating up. So we're going back to my original theory that um, your man was stealing, was was bringing the thing out of it when uh, uh, Olby ran into patrol. And that's why uh, Beeslubbin stuck up on him from behind. Because he didn't have any other way out. He wasn't about to just hide in the storeroom. Especially as those buildings are apparently very creaky and with old, uh, cre have creaky old floorboards, so he wouldn't have been able to stay in there concealed for long. Next video on the channel is going to be some more Fireman Three Houses are Verdant when Assassins Only Run. Thank you so very much for coming around to this episode of Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. Hopefully, I'll see you around, Admiral's going to be out of here now. Peace! And then this will be a cool thing. Let's hope you don't die. Nice. No, that's just enough uh, that uh, Ignacio can take down with ease. Like so. Pure. I wanted to do that first because if I accidentally took down the boss, otherwise it would be really bad because it would have ended the mission. Nice job, Ignot. Strength, next to speed, please. Gosh.